There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamed of in our philosophy. And in Australia, there are probably more odd than curious instances of plant, insect, and animal life than in any other country. Now, two lads prepare for a day's fishing. A worm is required. Eureka! Here it is. Bait for a whale. Aha! Enter the early bird. Meet the giant earthworm. Megas Kalides Australis. Well, that's his name, but don't hold it against him. These worms are numerous in the Gippsland area and have been found up to a length of 11 feet, but they average generally from 4 to 6 feet. Some bait. Now, don't get impatient. Yo-ho, heave-ho! And here it comes. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? It's a long worm that has no turning. And here he is, a nice handful of bait. In the meantime, Drake goes west. And who says eggs for breakfast? Well, that's what these are. So much for worms. Now here you are. Who'd like a nice bunch of Ocrogasta contraria? Well, translated with considerable freedom, this means the processional caterpillar, the original follow-my-leader exponents. The crowd complex is well developed in these creatures, for not only do they follow each other about, but they live together in large communities in peculiar bag-shaped nests. These nests are formed of a papery substance and are slung from the smaller branches and twigs of shrubs and trees and are filled with the cast-off skins and uh, other trifles. From the nest, a web track leads down to the ground, and once ashore, the caterpillars wander about in single file in search of food. Here they go, head to tail, trying to fool the birds into thinking they're snakes. One bright lad with a sense of humor joined the tail light to the headlight, and the music went round and round uh, uh, and round. Five weeks later, they were still in circulation. And so we let the go round go round, and we pass on to that most peculiar bird, the bower bird. The bower bird builds bowers. These bowers, or playgrounds as they are sometimes called, are quite distinct from their nests, which are built high up in the trees, and they've been described as the most wonderful instances of bird architecture yet discovered. In view of the amount of time that the bird puts into the job, well, they, they ought to be. Now look at this fellow. While his feathered relatives are busily increasing the mortality rate amongst the early worms, or sweetly serenading the girlfriend, the bower bird is bent on nobler errands. A few repairs to the summer house, or a, a new wing onto the baronial hall. Just a day's work. When the bowers are built, the bird gathers shells, colored leaves or flowers, anything he considers ornamental, and he decorates his bower with them. One such playground was found to contain pieces of blue paper, blue parrot feathers, and even a piece of blue ribbon. Uh, the bird refuses to say where he got it. However, you'll realize that the bower bird has a blue outlook on life. And here we switch to a different sort of oddity. Among the little known industries of Australia must surely be included this one. Now this gentleman has an order of 50,000 medicinal leeches, and here he hopes to fill the order in quick time. Standing in the water, he puddles the mud. This annoys the leeches, and so they come to the top to see what all the fuss is about. Over goes the board, and into the sock go the leeches. A full-blooded creature, the leech, he takes all and gives nothing, just another gold digger. Nice, friendly little creatures they are. They stick around so, sort of get attached. Well, anyway, let's say a long goodbye, we hope, to the mud puddler and his playmates and take to water uh, for a change. And now our destination lies just across the swamp. So chartering the local Queen Mary, we set a course for Reedy Lake, the breeding ground of ibis for countless centuries. Forging slowly through the green-mantled waterways, life becomes very pleasant and restful, unless you're paddling the canoe. As we approach the rookery, the ibis rise in great mobs, 
circling above the trees to see what manner of intrusion this might be. It's interesting to reflect that for eight months of the year, it's possible to walk or drive from one lake to another quite easily. But from August to November, the whole area, something like 200 square miles, is three to 10 feet underwater. Oh, these children, always fighting. Ah, oh, well, it's the same old story. Brother loves sister. Oi, stop it, you two. Can't a fellow ever get asleep? Like most birds, these ibis are of particular benefit to mankind. Each bird consumes about 2,000 young grasshoppers per day, and as the ibis are numbered in tens of thousands, the insects they consume in the course of a year work out at about uh, 15, 2, 15, 4, 15, 6, and one for is not... Anyway, you work it out. Meanwhile, we'll move on to that most popular and well-known Australian, the kangaroo. Now, remember the story of the Irishman who saw a kangaroo for the first time? Be jabbers, says Pat. There is no such creature. Anyway, old man kangaroo certainly takes some believing, doesn't he? These animals are indigenous to Australia. In fact, real natives. The enormous strength of the hind legs is shown by the distance that these marsupials can leap. You know, if it becomes necessary for him to fight, the roux makes full use of this strength of his. Each of his feet terminates in a long, sharp claw, capable of tearing a dog in half. And although the roux is normally a peaceful creature, well, just woe betide anyone who corners him at close quarters. Now, here we have a front seat at the kangaroo's Grand National Steeplechase, run over a bush course and any number of fences you care to put up. It seems a pity that they're not allowed to compete in the Olympic Games. There would certainly be some new jumping records. Hello. Someone taken the wrong turning. Steady there. Have a nice trip. Ah, well. Time hops on. And even a roo needs a rest sometimes. So until next Aussie Oddities, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.